If I give up the seat I've been saving To some elderly lady Oh man Am I being a good boy Am I your pride and joy Mother please if you please Say I am And if while in the course of my duty I perform an unfortunate thing Would you punish me so unbelievably so Never again will I make that mistake This feeling inside me could never deny me The right to be wrong if I choose And this pleasure I get from say Winning a bet is to lose When I'm drinking I'm a good fan of it, and um, I just think that I want to come to just pay his last respects to him, and just see <laughs> Nothing old, nothing new, nothing ventured, nothing gained, nothing still won or lost, nothing Further than proof, nothing wilder than you Nothing older than time, nothing sweeter than white Nothing physically, recklessly, hopelessly blind Nothing I couldn't say, nothing why cause today Nothing rhyme In contact, go Oh, oh. Run. Run there we are. Hello and welcome to Consylvania, two point late. Uh, we've been teleported to another dimension, a dimension where only the Dreamcast exists. Oh, it's a dream come true. Oh, it's a yeah, beauty, it's a Dreamcast special. We've got reviews of Ill Bleed, Lack of Love, Blue Stinger and Mac and X. Oh, it's exciting. I'll tell you what, we, there's no Consylvania here, isn't there? No. Nope. Oh, we've had to start from scratch. We've even been on this universe's version of Dragon's Den. Oh, we won the very good on it, though. Oh, this universe is amazing, isn't it? Ah, uh, it's astonishing. You should see it. On it. You won't. You should. <laughs> on. Hi, ladies. I'm Rab of Consylvania. Um, in this new universe, I'm looking for someone who would want to have a good sense of humour and laugh at jokes. Um, start again. But no, start again. Hi, hi everybody, the zany guy is here. If you want to get in touch with me, hi ladies of the new universe that we've teleported into, um, and I'm looking for someone who's into the things I'm into, like, um, I like, um, who likes to be eating a uh, free bentos pies, if you have them here in this new universe. We can do all sorts of things. It's I'm a zany guy! While games like Shadow of the Colossus and Ico are championed by the gaming community as the type of games that should be getting made, there's always those games out there like Lack of Love on the Dreamcast that have been played by very, very few people, but would probably be championed in much the same way if people knew what these games were like. LOL is the king, the poster boy of Dreamcast Obscura. Ryuichi Sakamoto does the soundtrack and was involved with conceptualising some of the game. And there's no language barrier here. That's the most surprising thing. Why haven't more people played this game? There is no language barrier. This is as much of an art house video game as you'll ever find. But it brings something new to the art house mix. It's fun. In the game, you're this little creature. This is how you start off. And what you do is you try and teach other animals things. Here you're teaching this little insect how to open up these plants. The game is all about these acts of kindness. You're helping these creatures, helping creatures to feed, showing them how to defend themselves, showing them how to reach certain areas that they can't reach yet, and they reward you with the ability to evolve into a new creature. 
And that's what this game is all about. It's like an idealised evolution. It's real grade A wank hat stuff. A lack of love is why we need to start all over again. A lack of love is why your species is spending its last days thinking up formats for late night quiz channels that prey on single mothers and desperate unemployed fathers. A lack of love is why we have to do it properly next time. Acts of kindness. Now once you've done enough to evolve into a new species, it's time for you to get inside an egg. Oh you dancer, I'm gonna turn into monkey! No you're no. You're just going to turn into a long-nosed creature that's slightly different from the creature you were before. The camera's going to zoom out a wee bit and you're going to be able to move to new areas you couldn't originally access. And this is where the puzzle-solving element of the game comes in. Look, I want to get up here towards that shaft of light. I want that shaft of light, but there's a gap here, so what do I do? A shaft of pish. Right onto that plant, which gives me access. If all video games had puzzles that you could solve like this, you could go to GameFAQs.com and it would just be that R. Kelly sex video, Bob's your uncle. LOL is a game full of surprises, so it's difficult to speak about, you don't want to spoil anything for anybody. But believe you me, every second you spend with this game is utterly charming. It has to be effortlessly one of the best games on the Dreamcast. It's full of ideas. And the concept itself, the concept that binds all these ideas together, is so sweet and so different. And stands up there alongside games like Ico and Shadow of the Colossus as inspiring stuff. LOL is a true example of a situation where somebody had an idea for a game and then made the game. Whereas so many games these days seem to be, they made the game and then tried to stick in some ideas later. The sad truth remains that LOL is a difficult game to find, and has been played by very few people and thus will not be championed, and hopefully when people watch this they'll try and hunt this game down. Maybe they'll make some forum posts about it, maybe they'll blog about it a wee bit, and maybe they'll let other people know that hey, LOL was pretty great. Look there's that footprint I walked in. Pretty fucking great. Number two could be number one. He's obviously catch up and overtake his score and fucking hell, do you know is, that? Is the aliens coming? Robbie! <laughs> Robbie! He looks like he's got fucking... <laughs> Robbie! ...tinfoil on his head. Robbie, you're not gonna read my thoughts tonight, pal. <laughs> to what? You're not, go you're not gonna read my mind tonight. Got <laughs> <laughs> him. What have you got on your head? Tinfoil. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> Come on, You're not going to see inside my mind. <laughs> I don't want to. Can, I think this is part of it. Can you see me better now, Robbie? Yeah, mate. <laughs> Seriously, though, where is that on your head? It's tin foil. <laughs> What are you on your head for? It's to stop Robbie reading my thoughts. <laughs> I don't know what you're thinking. Do you know what I'm thinking? Yeah. Are you going to let me? What? Do it. Do what? Robbie. I just need to go out for 10 minutes. A little, a little bit long. Huh? What, what have you got there? Uh, it's nothing, it's nothing. I just, I need to go out for 10 minutes, so I'll just, I'll not be long. So I'll see you later, right? I'm just going to enjoy the universe. Right, enjoy this new universe! <laughs> I will, I will. Right, I'll be back in a bit. Right, enjoy this new universe! <laughs> I will, I will. Right, see you. Right, thanks. See, see you later. See you later, Robert. Now I know that... Choo, choo. Help me, dogs, Bowser. I'm Blue Stinger! I've got zombies on me! Help me, dogs! Choo, choo. He's fucking brilliant, man. Brilliant. Choo, choo. Oh! What are you doing? I'm just... I'm just playing Blue Stinger.
on the, got it on the telly. But this new universe is full of Dreamcasts. You can just play it on the Dreamcast. I hit it off. Right, Ryan. Let us know, kid ourselves here. This is space, and space is exciting. Everybody is excited with space and asteroids and planets and stars and that green thing there and a big fucking dragon in space. What more do you want, you selfish bastards? What about a bit of blue stinger, eh? What about that? Come on, let's get enthusiastic about it. Yes! Like Elliot there. That's Elliot Ballad. Yes, THE Elliot Ballad. No. As some of you know, we've covered this in a roundabout sort of way in Consylvania before, so for those that don't know, let's have a recap of the story. A woman? Tim is what? A woman? I don't know. I don't know. A woman? Aye, Blue Stinger is the story of Dogs Bowers quest to find a woman and how it's driven him insane and now he thinks everybody's a woman, nobody safe for him. We better get a move on with this quest, so we'll only get four. 42 fucking minutes for a quest? That's for Jesus Christ. Here's a... Uh, fucking hell. Here's a minigame um, where you're shooting some stuff in an arcade. Now, unfortunately in Blue Stinger there isn't any aiming system. You just point your guy in the general direction and pull the trigger. But I'm dead good at it, so don't worry about it. What the fuck was that? A bulletproof bush or something? <laughs> you laughing at your prick? Now, Dogs Bower doesn't have hand-to-hand -hand fighting skills. Ah, that's what you're thinking because you're shite at the game, but I found his karate t-shirt. So, no, he does have fighting skills. What? Have you got a problem with that? One thing you will have noticed thus far in Blue Stinger is that the music's quite bloody loud. Quite bloody all the time. That's not a little I... rat. No better mother is exactly a like her. You're in a bad mood. There's no bad mood, Mon, let's cheer him up. Oh, it's gonna put me in a bad mood, that. Oh, everything's loud and in your face and up your bum, it's really fucking annoying. Search the entire store, she's saying. You know why she's saying that? Because this game is extremely adept at squeezing every single minute it can out of you. you. Save my life! Aye, no bother, pal. This is a section that's appropriate for what I'm talking about. You see, there's hundreds of rooms in this area, and I'm thinking, oh crap, I'm gonna have to go into all of them. But then the game says to me, no, you just need to go into these four, here's the codes. And I go, oh, thank God for that. And then I get into the four rooms, and I realise that I've not got the items that I need to do the repairs. So I do need to go into every room, and that's a good laugh. <laughs> I'm alright. Oh, I'm alright. You see, the thing about this game is it's just a complete grind. A chore. There's nothing happening, there's something happening there, but they're just respawning guys somewhere well sick of them. This is a jeep, have a look at it, it just looks like a motor to you, but what would a monster think if he saw that? He'd think, I don't know what that is, but I'm fucking wearing it. Why no? So I'll need to fight this big monster, and the game's gonna help me out the way it does every time, by pointing me at my own guy. Helpful that way, you can kinda see the guy, the monster there. So this is a better example. Stuck in a room, flying monsters, hunters of them, what am I looking at? My own guy's fucking cunt nut. Just press the fire button over and over again until they're all dead. Very exciting. Ah, it's history. We can't go any further. You're such a pessimist, aren't you? Such a pessimist. What about if I go on this like, fuel dump here, this fuel thing? I don't know, big cans like a fuel or something or other. Set fire to it, right? What if that happens? And then I jump off it when it explodes? Use the fucking nut dogs, you idiot. Thinking about all the birds all the time, that's what you're doing, you're fucking hopeless. Dogs, thank God you're here. Uh, ready to pay off your debt? Dang, he's a woman. Street Fighter 3, Third Strike, a fight for the future but it looks like the past. You need an arcade stick for this which I bought off a 14 year old wee lassie drug addict outside cash converters for a fiver. And here's old Shenmue, we all loved it, don't you deny it. And thus the saga begins. Ah, didn't he finish though did it? 
Tony Hawk's 2 was the daddy, so much so that in the recent Tony Hawk's Project 8, I jump about with a skateboard that has Tony Hawk's 2 printed on it, like some nostalgia pumped old fucker. There's three things you never forget how to do in life. One, riding a bike. Two, hiding your porn when you hear a key turning in the door. Three, playing Tony Hawk. I've still got it. Armada, an old school influence, shoot em up with RPG elements and some multiplayer magic. It'd be brilliant across Xbox Live this if Xbox Live wasn't full of teenage American assholes and French racists. <coughs> A man in a cockpit attached to a Dreamcast, which is attached to a big robot. Every Sega fan in the world wanted to be that guy. The only thing better than playing a Dreamcast is flying about inside one. This is Virtual On or a Torio Tangram, and playing this game without the twin sticks was like trying to slice a pizza with a grenade. Look at it, but. Fucking hell! All right, that's enough. Rush, 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 rush. Ian Rush, San Francisco Rush 2049. This game was underrated. Fantastic. Check the speed of it. It's like smash and drive on acid. Look at it. It's unbelievable. Back in the day, me and the Ryan and the Kennys and the Michaels, we'd all play San Francisco Rush, finding all the secret paths all the secret hidden places, just like the Nazis found Anne Frank eventually. Sad ending to that tale. Never mind, play some games. Oh, it can only be Giant Gram 2000. See if you're a wrestling fan, and if you're not a wrestling fan, you might as well fuck off. This is just the real deal. The whole experience, Kenna Kabashi breaking bones. It's a bone broken there. Arcade style. Came for an arcade cabinet this game. Comes to your home. Got me right into Japanese wrestling proper like. Fire Pro Wrestling D is the legend, the daddy of wrestling games. And look at the amount of guys you get in it. Brrr, can't even keep up with it. Look at the speed of it. Ooh, some amount of guys. That's more guys than your mods slept with. Finally, have a swatch at Coldacept Second on a Dreamcast. Beautiful strategy game, almost like Monopoly, a board game, a card battle game, it's all these things and it's coming out in the Xbox 360 soon, called Decept Saga, so you better get it and you can play me on live. Hi, you can play me. Why? Because I fucking stupidly left my gamer tag on this show. Oh, I'll fucking fight for that. I'll fight for that. Yeah, what might you now get some front packs on this guy? <laughs> Um, this is me, um, Ryan's doing his Mac and X review, right? And as we all know, any game, from a first person perspective, Ryan's shite at them, right? So, I've got a feeling we're going to see something quite interesting here. Let's check. Oh, <laughs> game FAQs! And you? Is that on? Aye, you fucking right down! What's that? What's that? That's the hang man, I wasn't cheating. Ah, you're cheating. Tell me, do you first person cheating. things? I was, I was one of the poor. Aye, so you were. Oh, you're looking at me, I fake you. I'm telling everybody. I was having a word. I'm telling everybody. I was having a word. Aye, what? No, you were cheating. Don't tell anybody. I'm telling you. Oh, you're the best. I'm having a word.
Look at the beginning of this game. Use your eyes. The core of the soul. You watch now. Where is she? It seems as if she's in a couple or something. Barely here, you know? Mark him. Deus ex machina. Magic. That was it. Turn the game on for the first time, but in a track mode, but in a title screen, and I'm already thinking this game probably isn't going to be shite. And it's an Atlas game, and now Atlas have got a kind of tradition of bringing out games that quite often have a good base, a good engine working behind it, and this game's no different. It's a first person fighting game, as you can see, and here's the main, well, main character, I suppose. It's Mackin. Now, this I don't understand because the game's got reams and reams, t tons of beautifully designed characters, and then the main thing they've went. What would they do with Mackin? We've not drew him yet. What about Jobby with an eye? Ah, fuck it, that'll do. Let's go to the pub. Here's another one of the beautifully designed characters. You see what I mean? Gorgeous. Say hello to him. Hello, Kitty. Hello, Kitty. See? Well, fuck you then. Well, how about that? I'm only kidding you, dicks. Love you. Oh. No, Mac and X's main base, and the, main, the entire game more or less is you move through areas, you fight guys, right, and then you get to a boss, you fight the boss, and some of them you can brain hack, they call it brain jack, sorry, shite, I got it wrong, bastard, I like start again, nah, fuck it, we'll just move on. This is my favourite guy in the game, he can't he dance or shit, and his rhythm's all off, but look at him, he's amazing. Here's the first time you see him in the game, I mean, look at him, look at the character design, awesome, he's lit. Poirot, Elvis, Dickie Davis, and he's part of the Legion of Doom as well. After he's got it all. Amazing. They thought so everything. This is what this game does to me. I've started waffling on. I'm not even fucking telling you anything about the game, but it's alright, well, alright, alright, right, calm down. Do you know what I mean? Just cool it. What you need to understand about Mac and X is it's really good fun to play. You don't want to grind it. You don't want to sit down for three or four hours and play through it because it can get a wee bit repetitive. Now that's not a criticism. It's just the type of game that you pick up for an hour, play a few stages, get another couple of characters and turn that off again. Earlier there I said this was a game going on for the first time, but that isn't true. It's just another game that sat on my shelf for years and I never really go around to playing. So this isn't me reminiscing about a Dreamcast game that I have any past affection for, this is just me sitting in Space Year 2007, playing it thoroughly for the first time and really fucking enjoying it. I mean, more than anything, it's amazing how finished the whole game feels. It's, it, 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 it's all kind of understated, and yet it's got everything. It's got its characters, it's got its story, it's got decent voice acting, a wee bit shaky here and there, and it's got an engine that at the time must have felt astonishing. It has its flaws nowadays. I mean, for Christ's sake, you can't look up and down in it. You can jump air, guys. And believe me, you're going to have to jump air, guys. If you don't want to use that locking system, you're humped. What else has it got? Um, Stages, of course, stages. There's like fucking 17 different stages. You go to Japan, Moscow, America, London, Paris, Brazil. They're, they're not huge areas, these stages, but again, everything's solid. And again, everything's delivered in that understated, subtle, self assured tone. Other tidbits that you might want me to cover before I go, the characters that you brain jack can be levelled up by defeating enemies as you would kind of expect from Atlas. There's a wide variation in bad guys throughout the game, um, all with their own unique attack and defence patterns which gives you a sense of achievement when you defeat them. So from all my ramblings, if you haven't picked up on the fact that I think this game is really fucking good and you take into consideration that you could go out the mall and get a Dreamcast and this game for 30 quid, I don't see why you wouldn't be convinced. But here's a guy having a wank on my corpse if you're no. I don't know what it's like trying to get spunk it up. Oh, thank you. And we're here to propose a hundred pounds investment in Consylvania.com. And for that a hundred pounds we will offer up ninety-five percent share in our company. Yes. We have noticed a gap in the market, there are no review shows in this universe. So we get teleported into this universe recently. Just briefly summarise that journey for me. Can we have a second? We, we have been in our universe, we have been making Consylvania for to over two years and our last episode 
was released about five or six months ago. And five or six months ago? Did you somewhere get the impression that we were daft? You can't relate this to any quality product at all. Yeah. You're idiots, basically. Sorry, I can't work with idiots. I'm out. Still get fighting fantasy books in this universe. See that? Right in second robber, let's see what you've got. Pretty s oh. Oh. There we are. So one. Oh, clean white belt. Fuck no, I'm in trouble, boys. The Dreamcast was never known for its survival horror games. It had Resident Evil Code Veronica, true, but it also had Pish, like The Ring, and Carrier, and Owlbleed. Owlbleed, right in your fucking face. Now, I could explain the backstory to this game, but Probably better we let one of the stars do it instead. For as long as I can remember, my family ran what we called a horror caravan. My dad was always conjuring up new devices, tricks, and traps, each one scarier than the last. <laughs> Guess who he tried them out on? Yep, me. No. Oh, a wee bit of domestic abuse for you there, eh? I guess it toughened me up a little. Aye, look on the bright side, eh? Anyway, oh you get God. to go back to your pervert oh, bastard of a dad's house with a bunch of your pals who are a bunch of absolute fannies. But if you manage to stay the night in the house, you win a wonderful prize. Look, we can win a hundred million bucks there. That's a great prize. You could probably buy a PS3. Don't know if you noticed there, but this game's called Owlbleed, which is why Owlbleed is written everywhere in the game and flies constantly into your face, as if gamers have such short attention spans that we forget what we're playing while we're playing it. Anyway, it's a kind of game where you have to read the instruction manual, because nothing's explained. Here's lots of things to buy, don't know why we want to buy them. Here's a place where we can save the game, a dummy takes your photo, why a dummy? Don't know. And here is where we access the levels. Little cinemas. Why cinemas? Don't know. This movie level is called Home Run of Death and you get a wee story before it every time so just relax and enjoy the lovely atmospheric story. Oh, I'm excited! Now you play a sport, a game, knowing full well that you're either going to win or lose unless you fucking draw. You never expect to die before your dreams come true. Is that right? Try living in Glasgow. Or his father, Gail Ben. Right now, this is an important point. See that guy's name there? It's Gail Banballo, right? B A N B A L L O W. Gail Banballo. We're playing Owlbleed, by the way. But here, it's changed to Banballo. B A N. B O L L O W. And see when shit like that happens, you know you're playing a fucking stinker. Careful, a trap! And yes, that's what this game's all about. Hitting traps, falling, oh, I fell into a pit! Oh, and I fell back out again somehow. Yes, totally bizarre. The only way you can detect these traps is with a horror monitor, and you can only find out that you need the horror monitor by reading the fucking manual. Once you've read that and found the horror monitor, then you can scan for traps and activate them without triggering them yourself. Now, I've just marked off some places as traps here, so you're not going to scare me. Uh, uh, I don't think you ever fucking would have anyway. And so we have a game where you're moving from room to room, searching for horrific traps and triggering them before you get there. <gasps> oh, I missed that one! Oh, it's a phone! A phone's ringing! Oh, I'm scared of the Indian call centres. <gasps> Slashed and chibbed by a bunch of horns, eh? Here's some combat for you, just in case you thought it was all traps. Combat is you slashing away at some poorly realised monster in a flashing blue square. And that H on the floor, in case you get in trouble, you can stand on it and shout for a helicopter. And a helicopter will come and rescue you through the ceiling of a house that's inside a cinema inside a theme park. 
Don't get too excited though, most of this game is standing in an empty room by yourself, waiting for your health to recover so that you can continue on. It's like fucking party time, isn't it? <gasps> Uh, what's the shite called again? Don't use forget it. Well folks, sadly the bad news is that this is the end of the line for Consylvania. We're trapped in this bizarre universe that, you know, you, you haven't seen much of, but believe me it's just bizarre and trapped here we can't do the coverage that we'd like today so it's, it's time to wrap it all up. So the dream's become a nightmare for me, obviously, I think you know what I'm talking about, so... And I enjoyed making Consulvania as well, and th thanks to all of you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. I don't believe it! Oh, it's Kenny! It's Kenny! Have you came to save Kenny, us, Kenny? Have a fuck, I'm here to conquer this place, this new universe. So, do we need Can to... Can we stay and be your princes? Your no, your... you just have to get the fuck out. No fat poofs allowed here anymore. Get out. Wormholes are there. Get to fuck. How, how did you make a wormhole? What do you mean I'm fucking me? Get out. But, how can we make a show without you, Kenny? It's not going to be the same. I don't give a fuck. I'm here to stay. I'm here to conquer this universe. And you just have to get the fuck out right now. This is my art. Nick, right. come on. Consul go. Consulvania without Kenny, but. What? Oh, a whole fucking universe of possibilities. A million old soldiers will fade away, but a dream goes on forever. I'm left standing here, I got nothing to say. All is silent within my Time is stopped in my feet.